A couple of days ago, I noticed that Wizards of the Coast released this free adventure called Peril in Pinebrook, and I thought I would do a read-through of it because quite a few people seem to have enjoyed my read-through of Dragons of Stormwreck Isle. Quick, uh, quick disclaimer before I get into this, I am not a professional voice actor, a reader, or anything like that, so I will undoubtedly uh, stumble over my words from time to time. So just uh, keep that in mind. If that kind of thing irritates you, then please click off of the video. <laughs> Having said that, let's go ahead and get into it. So this is called uh, Peril in Pinebrook. And the cover page says, An introductory adventure for the world's greatest role-playing game. Welcome to Dungeons & Dragons, Peril in Pinebrook. Welcome to the adventure of a lifetime. Peril in Pinebrook is an introductory Dungeons & Dragons, also known as D&D, adventure designed for younger players, but it can be enjoyed by players of all ages. Peril in Pinebrook contains four ready-to-play characters that you can use to run your first D&D game. The simplified rules allow a Dungeon Master, also known as the DM, to easily run the game without needing other rules, materials, or rules knowledge. The suggested number of participants for this experience is 1 DM and 4 players, but instructions describe how to run a game for fewer players. If you have more than 4 players, any of the ready to play characters can be used by more than one player. The Basics Dungeons & Dragons is a collaborative storytelling and role playing game. Each player takes on the role of an adventuring character a hero with skill and knowledge, and sometimes magic, that lets them overcome challenges and achieve greatness. One of the participants in the game takes the role of the Dungeon Master DM. The DM acts as the lead storyteller, the keeper of secrets, and the referee. This document provides everything you need to know to get started as a DM. The Adventure Characters in Dungeons & Dragons undertake quests throughout their lives, heroic journeys, and death-defying acts of courage that become tales of legend or tales of doom. Peril and Pinebrook contains helpful hints, suggestions, and rules explanations that assist new dungeon masters in running the adventure. If you're the DM, you can run this adventure as it's written, or you can add your own bits of story. Your imagination and the imaginations of the other players make each game of D&D unique. The Running and Adventure section has information that can help you decide whether you want to be a DM. If you prefer to play a character instead, don't read Adventure Introduction or any of the adventure beyond that. If you do, some of the fun of playing might be spoiled for you. The Rules Dungeons & Dragons is a special type of game known as a role-playing game RPG. In D&D, the rules help determine if the character succeeded or fail at the challenge they face. They also help the entire group of players tell a fun, exciting, and memorable story. The rules are explained in the using the rules section. The running and adventure section provides the DM advice on leading the other players through a game session. The adventure text also explains rules and gameplay along the way. The tools. To play this game, you need this packet and some dice, at least one 20-sided die, a d20, and one six-sided die, d6. It speeds up play if each player has their own dice, but players can share. If you don't have these if you don't have these dice, you can find digital dice rollers online. And I'll add to that that there are lots of apps that people can put on their phones as well, which is probably even more convenient than using something online. Each player should also have a way to make notes and keep track of changes to their character sheets as play progresses. A pencil and a paper work well. Character Sheets This packet includes four character sheets and a handy guide 
that explains some of the rules and character options in more detail. Give each player one character sheet. If you have more than four players, they can change the names and descriptions on a duplicate character sheet so that they'll have unique characters with similar abilities and equipment. The Helping the Characters section later in this document provides more information about using character sheets. The Experience Peril in Pinebrook provides a play experience that can be completed in 60 to 90 minutes. It's fine to take breaks or run the adventure in shorter sessions. The play experience can also be made longer if desired, allowing time for people to roleplay their characters and talk with each other adds to the fun of D&D. Before play begins, the DM should read through this document to get a better understanding of the rules and the adventure. Using the rules, Peril in Pinebrook uses a simplified version of the Dungeons & Dragons rules to teach the game to new DMs and players. The text of the adventure also contains tips that DMs and players might find useful. Character Actions A character's actions hold the potential for either success or failure. Can you hit a monster with your weapon? Can you balance on a narrow ledge as you ascend a mountain? Can you convince a dragon not to eat you? You find the answers to these questions during the game by making a d20 roll. D20 rolls. The 20-sided die, D20, is the most used die in D&D. It is rolled whenever a character or a creature tries to do something important. Things a character might try to do are listed under attacks and skills on the character sheets. Next to attacks and skills are number expressions such as plus 5 to hit. This is the number you add to your die roll when your character uses that attack or skill. For example, the character sheet for Shalefire Stoutheart lists hand axe under attacks with plus six to hit next to it. If Shalefire wants to attack a monster with their hand axe, the player rolls a d20. If the die roll is a 20, the player adds 6 to the die roll for a final attack score of 16. How does the player know if their, if their roll succeeds or fails? Read on to find out. Armor Class The number a character tries to equal or exceed with an attack roll is called Armor Class, also called AC. The higher a creature's armor class, the harder that creature is to hit. In the previous example, Shalefire's attack roll with a hand axe would hit a creature with an armor class of 16 or lower. Damage. When an attack roll hits, it deals damage. The damage roll appeal, uh, appears after the attack on the character sheet. Shalefire's hand axe does 1d6 plus 4 damage. So the player would roll one six-sided die, d6, and add four to that die roll. Difficulty class. Difficulty class, dc, is the number that a character must equal or exceed to succeed at an action that is not an attack. This includes rolls to use skills. For example, if Shalefire wants to move a heavy boulder blocking the mouth of a cave, that requires a skill called Athletics. Under Skills on Shalefire's character sheet, it says Athletics plus 6. So Shalefire's player rolls a 20-sided die and adds 6 to the number on the die. If the difficulty class to move the boulder is 12, the player would need to roll a 6 or higher for Shalefire to move the boulder. The difficulty class for actions a character can attempt is given in the adventure text. In general, a difficulty class of 10, DC 10, is easy, while a DC of 15 is challenging. Most of the actions in this adventure are DC 10. 
the Dungeon Master can change DCs if circumstances make an action easier or harder. They can also make up their own DCs when the characters attempt actions not covered in the, ad in the adventure. Advantage and Disadvantage Sometimes what's happening in the adventure makes things easier for a character. At other times, the odds are stacked against the heroes. These circumstances can be reflected in D&D as advantage or disadvantage. DM Tip Advantage and disadvantage are powerful game tools. They make d20 rolls more likely to succeed or fail, so use them wisely. They are best used as a reward for clever play by the players, or to represent good or bad luck affecting the story. In the full version of the D&D rules, certain rules automatically give a character advantage or disadvantage. For this adventure, the DM can decide when to apply advantage or disadvantage to roles. If a character has both advantage and disadvantage on a role, they cancel each other out and the role is made normally. Advantage. If Shellfire attacks a monster with a hand axe while the monster is distracted by another character, the monster can't see the attack coming. The DM might decide the monster is easier to hit while distracted, so Shalefire would make the attack roll with advantage. Advantage means that instead of rolling the d20 once for the attack roll, Shalefire's player rolls the d20 twice and uses the higher roll. They then add the normal modifier, plus 6 for Shalefire's hand axe, to get a final attack result. Disadvantage. Disadvantage works like advantage in reverse. If something in the game makes it harder to take an action, the role for that action is made with disadvantage. For example, as Shalefire climbs a cliff using a rope, a monster at the top of the cliff shakes the rope. Because it's now harder to climb, Shalefire makes the d20 roll to climb the rope with disadvantage. Disadvantage means that instead of rolling the d20 once to make the athletics check to climb, Shellfire's player rolls the d20 twice and uses the lower roll. They then add the normal modifier, plus 6 for Shellfire's athletic skill, to get a final result. Hit points. Every creature in D&D has a number of hit points. This number reflects the damage a creature can take before it falls unconscious or is defeated. When a character or creature is damaged by an attack roll or a hazard in the game, the amount of damage dealt is subtracted from the character's or creature's hit points. If a creature reaches zero hit points, they are defeated. The player can decide if this means a creature is dead or unconscious or if they run away. When a character reaches zero hit points, they are unconscious. In this adventure, a character at zero hit points remains unconscious until they regain hit points through healing or until the end of the encounter, when they regain one hit point automatically. The adventure details ways to regain hit points. Running an adventure. A DM gets to use their imagination while presenting the adventure to the other players. The DM can add excitement to the game as they describe the situations and help players navigate their way through the action. Presenting Encounters This adventure is, decided, uh, is divided into encounters, which are like scenes from a movie or show. Each encounter has specific challenges. Once the players complete the challenges, move on to the next scene. The flow of the game is described below. Game Flow A D&D session begins with the DM and the other players having a conversation. The DM explains the situation the characters are in. The players can ask questions about the situation, and the DM answers those questions to further explain what's happening. Then. The DM asks the most important question in the DM's toolbox. What do you do? 
At this point, players should explain what they want their characters to do. If what they want to do is impossible, the DM says so and asks the player to choose a different action. For example, a character can't walk through a wall unless they have some special ability or magic that allows them to do so. If the action is possible and very easy to do, the character automatically succeeds. Opening an unlocked door or lifting a light object doesn't require heroic effort, so no d20 roll is necessary. When the action is somewhere between easy and impossible, trying to do it could lead to success or failure. That's when the DM calls for a d20 roll. See the d20 rolls section earlier in this document. The d20 roll, plus its modifiers, determines whether the action succeeds or fails. What does success or failure mean for an adventure? This is where you and the player get to tell a story together. Narrating successes and failures. When a d20 roll succeeds or fails, the DM and the players can turn that result into a part of the ongoing story. What does it look like when a monster is defeated? What does Shalefire say or do if the heavy boulder blocking the cave doesn't budge? These points in the game can spark great storytelling and acting moments. Remember, though, that part of the DM's job is to keep the game's story moving forward. If describing every single attack roll in a long combat gets boring, just say how much damage the attack deals and get to the next exciting moment. Tips for Dungeon Masters. Here are some tips for DMs that can help. Here are some tips for DMs that can help them run great games. Rule 0. Rule 0 of D&D is simple. Have fun. It's fine if everyone agrees to change the rules as long as doing so means the game is more fun for everyone. Be supportive. The players and the DM are all on the same team. DMs aren't playing against the characters. The DM wins when the players have fun and the story is exciting and memorable. Use yes and or no but. Allow the players to succeed as much as possible and let them participate in the storytelling of the story. If they want to try something unexpected, try to say yes and then work their ideas into the story. If you have to say no to a player's idea, suggest options that let them do something similar. Use your imagination. Peril in Pinebrook is an outline for your game. Change or make up anything you need to if it makes the game more fun. The text can't cover everything players might want to do. What does a monster smell like? That's up to you. Or you can ask the players what they think. NPCs are your voice. While the players determine what their characters do, the DM controls all other characters in the game. Non-player characters, also known as NPCs, are a great tool for the DM to help the characters understand the game and the story, and to work information into the story smoothly. Allow alternatives. D&D is a game of fantasy where heroes use wits, skill, and determination to overcome obstacles. Sometimes those obstacles are defeated with weapons and spells, but characters can succeed in other ways. Communicating with monsters, tricking them or frightening them away, or avoiding a fight while cleverly sneaking past a challenge can be just as much fun. Such options are ideal if anyone playing the game wants to avoid violence. Listen to your players. Encourage your players to speak to you, publicly or privately, if something in the game upsets them. Then respond appropriately. For instance, you can move past upsetting topics by quickly narrating a resolution to a scene, then quickly move to the next part of the story. 
Adventure Introduction. If you are a player, stop reading here. The rest of this document is for the Dungeon Master only. So I'll insert a comment here. Obviously, if you are listening to me read through this book and you plan on playing this adventure, uh, stop listening. <laughs> Continuing on. In Peril in Pinebrook, the, character, the characters find a newborn dragon and must return the infant to its mother's lair. The lair, however, is under attack by hostile forces. As the DM, you'll present the challenges the characters face as they take the baby dragon home. Text that appears in a box like this is meant to be read aloud to the players. You can read boxed text word for word or use your own words. To begin the adventure, show your players the character sheets, then read the following passage aloud to your players. So actually with that, let's take a pause here and let's look at the character sheets. So let me scroll down a bit. And let me rotate this sideways. There we go. And I'll have to zoom out a little bit. That's way too much. Okay, so the first character sheet that we have is for Shalefire Stoutheart. Stalefire is a dwarf fighter with an armor class of 16. And it looks like they're wearing ringmail armor and wielding a shield. Shalefire has 13 hit points. And they have a hand axe with a plus 6 to hit. And that will do 1d6 plus 4 melee damage. Uh, melee will be described in the rules a bit later, so we'll get into that later. They, uh, Stalefire, Shalefire also has a short bow that has a plus 3 to hit and it does 1d6 range damage. And Shalefire is carrying 20 arrows, and of course the player needs to keep track each time they fire an arrow and are unable to retrieve it, then they will need to you know, subtract one arrow from their inventory. So Shalefire's skills are animal handling with a plus five, athletics with a plus six, perception with a plus three, and survival with a plus three. Shellfire is also carrying a crowbar, has enough rations to last one day, and has 50 feet of rope. Then it is up to the individual player to choose between some checkboxes to describe their player's like disposition, essentially. They can either choose to be grumpy or enthusiastic. They can choose to be unkempt or well-dressed. They can choose to be long-haired or bald or they can choose to be proud or humble. And I'm sure, you know, the DM would allow other options there as well. But those are just the ones that are like out of the box, so to speak. And then it also says that Shellfire has a special ability. Once during this adventure, you can regain six hit points. You regain these hit points either when you take your turn during combat or after a combat ends. You cannot have more hit points than the hit points on your character sheet. So that would just simply mean if you're down to 10 hit points or 9 hit points and you want to use your special ability, then you're not going to go up to you know, 15 or 16 respectively. You're only going to go back up to 13. So you probably want to make sure that you're down to like, you know, 6 or 7 before you use that ability so that you don't waste it. Okay, so that's everything for Shalefire. Pretty simple character sheet. So next we'll look at, uh, we'll go with Nura or Nora Eldenfield as the character pr uh, name pronunciation. So Nura has an armor class of 14 and is wearing leather armor. And they are a halfling rogue with 11 hit points. Nura has a short sword with a plus 5 to hit, which does 1d6 plus 3 melee damage. They also have a short bow with plus 5 to hit that does 1d6 plus 3 ranged, and is also carrying 20 arrows, which I think is identical 
Yeah, it's almost identical to the previous the previous character's abilities. For skills, uh, Nura has uh, acrobatics with plus five, investigation with plus three, perception with plus three, and stealth with plus five. And they have, in their equipment, they have a climber's kit, rations to last one day, and thieves' tools. And then to describe their disposition, they can choose between excited or calm, barefoot or fancy boots, timid or brave, and finally selfish or generous. And their special ability is if you hit with an attack roll in the first round of combat, during an encounter, you roll two six-sided dice, 2d6, for damage, and add your damage modifier. And I believe I read in the rules earlier as I was skimming through this that that special ability can only be used one time per adventure or per day. I don't remember. We'll get to that later. The next character is Galantine Birchenbow. So Galantine's armor class is 12. They have no armor. They are a wizard elf with 9 hit points. And for the attacks, Galantine has a fireball with plus 5 to hit. It does 7 damage ranged. They have a quarter staff, which is a plus 3 to hit weapon with 1d6 uh, damage, and that's melee damage. Their skills are Arcana plus 5, History plus 5, Nature plus 5, and Perception plus 3. The other equipment that Galantine is carrying is a blank book, ink and pen, a mirror, and rations to last one day. And they can describe their character's demeanor by saying they are very young or very old, absent-minded or focused, silver-haired or golden-haired, soft-spoken or loud. And their special ability is uh, twice during this adventure, instead of using one of your regular attacks, you can cast a spell called Magic Missile. When you cast this spell, three missiles of magic... Uh, let me start that over. When you cast this spell, three missiles of magical force automatically hit any creatures you can see without needing d20 rolls. You can hit the same creature with all three missiles, or you can hit different creatures with fewer missiles as long as you use three missiles total. Each missile automatically deals three damage. Okay, last character is Evan Don Hart. Evan Don has an armor class of 14. They're wearing scale mail armor. They are a human cleric with 11 hit points. Their attacks are, they have a mace that does plus, uh, with a plus 5 to hit that does 1d6 plus 3 melee damage. They have a short bow with plus 2 to hit that will do 1d6 range damage and they're carrying 20 arrows in their quiver. Their skills are athletics plus 3, insight plus 5, perception plus 5, and religion plus 5. And the other equipment they have is a holy symbol, rations for one day, and a rope of 50 feet. And they can describe their character by choosing between these options. Graceful or clumsy, silly or serious, polished armor or tarnished armor, peaceful or warlike. Evendon has a special ability that says... Twice during this adventure, you can cast a spell called Cure Wounds on yourself or another creature. You can cast this spell instead of using one of your regular attacks or after a combat ends. When you do this, the creature you cast the spell on regains 7 hit points. A character cannot have more hit points than the hit points on their character sheet. Okay, so that's a look at the characters. So let's resume the adventure. Let me get back to where I left off. Okay, so we read that. All right, here we are. Let me zoom back in so I can read more easily and it'll show up better, better in the video playback. 
Okay, to begin the adventure, show your players the character sheets. Then read the following passage aloud to your players. We're going to play a short game of Dungeons & Dragons. These character sheets have information about your character on them. You can each have one character to play. You can let the players choose their characters, but if your time is limited, consider choosing characters for them. Once each player has a character sheet, read the following. Write your name in the space where it says player name. Your character already has a name, which you can use if you want, or you can change the name. There's space below the name where you can give your character a nickname. Each character sheet has a description area for your character's appearance, personality, and attitude. Choose from the options there or make up your own. You can act out how your character behaves based on their description and personality. So yeah, if you don't like those options like very young, very old, uh, tarnished armor or polished armor, you, it, you know, this section's saying that, you know, you can make up your own. Uh, each, each player can make up their own. Offer to help the players fill out these parts of their character sheets if needed. Do your best to answer questions from players, but some questions are best answered as they come up during play. Let the players know that you'll give them more information along the way. Still, you may need to pause between each section to answer questions as you present the following information. So this is another block text that you would read out loud. Let's go over other parts of the character sheet. There is some information you should know before we start playing. Race and class. Each character in D&D has a race and a class that help determine what things a character does best. Some of the other information on a character sheet is based on a character's race and class. Armor class and hit points. Each character has an armor class, also called AC, and hit points. Armor class tells how hard it is to hit a character with an attack roll. The higher the AC, the harder it is to hit a character. Hit points determine how much damage a character can take. When a character takes damage, subtract that damage from the character's hit points. If a character's hit points reach zero, they are unconscious. You'll learn how to regain hit points later in the game. Continuing on with the block text that we continue reading to the characters or to your players. Attacks. Each character can make attacks with melee or ranged weapons or with melee or ranged spells. Melee means an attack that is used when a character is right next to a monster. Ranged means an attack that is used when a character isn't near a monster. The number after the attack on a character sheet is added to a d20 roll, a roll of a d20 uh, or rather a roll of a 20-sided die when a character attacks. The higher the number, the more likely the attack succeeds. Skills. Each character can use the skills listed on their character sheet. The number after a skill shows what the player adds to a d20 roll. The higher the number, the better the character is at that skill. If a character wants to use a skill that isn't on their character sheet, the player rolls a d20-sided die but does not add a number to that roll. Equipment A character has equipment they can use to overcome challenges during adventures. They also might find more equipment during adventures. Special Ability Each character has a special ability. This ability lets a character do something during the adventure that other characters can't do. You get to choose when your character uses their special ability, but a character can use a special ability only a limited number of times or under special circumstances. Okay, so that's the end of the block text that you read aloud. Explain how d20 rolls work with the following 
with the following example, and then we move into another block text that you read out loud to the players. The character Nora Eldenfield has a short bow attack that says plus five to hit. When Nora attacks with the short bow, Nora's player rolls a d20 and adds five to the number rolled on the die. I'll tell you if that attack hits the monster. If it does, Nora, uh, Nora's short bow attack also says damage 1d6 plus 3. The player rolls a six-sided die and adds 3 to determine the damage dealt by the attack. And that's the end of that block text. That's the end of that block text that you would read out loud. A player reference sheet also details some of the terms on the character sheets. Now, let's get on with the game. All right, so I'll end this one here, uh, end this recording here, and we'll pick up in the next recording with the starting the adventure.